Space is the distance between our home here on Earth and the billions of stars and galaxies in the skies above us. Space is the distance between people, a person on a continent far away or your neighbor down the street. It's the physical distance between loved ones, between us and the world around us. Space is also where our kinships form and grow, like gravity between the stars. In space, what separates us can unite us. It's where we meet challenges and grow stronger together as we strive to understand the world around us and the worlds above us. And in that journey, we begin to understand who we are, to ask ourselves why we cross the oceans and reach out toward distant planets and send our songs 13 billion miles into the great beyond and hope that someone is listening. Space reminds us that in the distances that separate us are the challenges that define us. Challenges we face together and that we accept together. We choose to go to the moon. Challenges that cannot be postponed. Challenges that we can win. Wherever we find shelter, we are together. Tonight, we will sing songs to remind us that there actually isn't much space between what makes all of us human and the best that we can be. Welcome to Space Songs Through the Distance from the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. I'm Adam Savage. I'm not in the museum right now in Washington, D.C. No, I'm in my cave, my shop here in San Francisco, waiting, like we all are, for things to start to feel normal again. Stories from the National Air and Space Museum are stories about overcoming seemingly impossible odds, like gravity itself. But they're also stories about envisioning a world that might seem impossible from where you're standing, like a world in which people can walk on the surface of the moon. Right now, it feels a little bit like we are spinning in space, watching the world go by outside our windows. So tonight, we wanted to share with you some songs that have helped us get through these past few weeks. Some of them are about space, about stars and planets, astronauts and spaceships, but like all the stories at the museum in DC, they're really about people doing their best under the most extraordinary circumstances. We're starting off with a song by a friend of mine, and it's a song about loss. We begin here because it's an important part of moving forward to recognize exactly where we are right now so that we can envision what comes next. This is John Roderick of The Long Winters singing The Commander Thinks Aloud. Dogs and birds 
reaching stars The horses call the storm Because the air contains the charm The Commander Thinks Aloud is such an important song to me. I've actually even performed it a couple of times, but there is nothing like hearing John sing it. It's tragic, and yet I hear real optimism in it. Spaceflight is about people doing their very best work together, and we do it, of course, for the science and the engineering, but we also do it to bring home, to bring back to the people on Earth a unique vision of the planet, of the spaceship we live on. And I hope that we achieve that here tonight. Here to help us reframe our reality is Lucas Nelson with entirely different stars. One, two, three, four. Wanna take a ride, the good kind of ride. They wanna get lost in space kind of ride. The sun and the moon and the evening tide will disappear below. I got a guide, a good tour guide, the best in the galaxy, bona fide. He's gonna introduce me to alien life, we ain't never coming home. Our little world don't mean a thing. Come on, baby, won't you ride with me on a spaceship? 
I'll buy us a nice little farm a thousand light years south of Mars. I'll give you love and underneath entirely different stars, entirely different stars. Good kind of dream, the never ever want to wake up kind of dream. My whole planet, or so it seemed, was healthy and pristine. I woke up with my baby near, I looked around and I shed a tear. My whole planet that I held dear was ruled by greed and fear. Our little world don't mean a thing. Come on, baby, won't you ride with me on a spaceship? I'll buy us a nice little farm a thousand light years south of Mars. I'll give you love and underneath entirely different stars, entirely different stars, entirely different stars. Hello everyone, I'm NASA astronaut Jessica Meir and I'm excited to welcome you to the International Space Station. My crewmates and I live about 250 miles above the Earth where we conduct research that both paves the way for future space exploration and benefits life back on Earth. Music remains a fundamental element of my life, whether I'm hard at work in this orbiting laboratory or taking a moment to appreciate our stunning home planet spinning beneath us. Capable of transcending and transforming my mood, music enlightens us, unites us, inspires us, and takes us to places outside our imaginations. Music lends a voice to describe the indescribable, connecting things that despite feeling as if they are worlds apart, are actually intrinsically linked in the human experience. I hope you can connect in such a way to science and space, the building blocks of the Artemis program our newest human spaceflight program that will send the first woman and the next man to the moon. So have a fabulous time tonight. 
revel in your favorite song, be inspired, and join us on our next journey among the stars. Coming up next, we have Grace Potter with stars. Hi everyone, Mike Massimino, former astronaut. Music played a huge role in both of my space flights. My greatest memories really are looking at the Earth go by and listening to music. Some of my favorites were U2, Radiohead, Hold Play, and Sting. I don't think he's singing this song tonight, but my favorite song to listen to going over the Earth at night was Why Should I Cry For You. I love that song. I had it on both of my missions. I flew a CD. With, Sing, with Sting's music on it on uh, both of my flights. Had it on my iPod. We only had those on my second flight. But whenever I hear that song, it reminds me of my time in space. So thank you, Sting, for doing that and enjoy his music during the concert. Uh, we did learn a lot about sheltering in place while we were in space. We actually were trained on it. So there's no reason why people should know how to do that naturally, I don't think. 
But some of the things that were very meaningful to me about sheltering in, in space that I think apply to what we're going through now as I shelter in New York City is that you're in this together with your group that you're around. We were in very tri- tight quarters, seven of us on each of my flights on the space shuttle. So not much room, not much privacy, seven adults. So what we found we needed to do was to respect each other's privacy, respect everybody, think about the other person first, think about the group before you think about yourself. And what that does is I felt it always brings out the best in everybody. We all share this planet together, wherever we're from, uh, whatever country, whatever town, whatever place we are from, we all share this planet together. I don't necessarily think of myself only as a New Yorker or as an American. I, I am those things. But I also think of myself as a citizen of the earth because we all share the same home. And we're still doing that now. We have the same home, all of us together. We're in this, this situation together. Uh, and music can help us, help bring us together. So uh, stay healthy. Try to keep the morale up. God bless. Hi, my name is Bethany Costantino. I play in a band called Best Coast. That's Snacks. This is Josie. They refuse to leave me alone during this time, so they're a part of the band today. Um, and I'm gonna play a song called Sleep Won't Ever Come. I close my eyes at the end of the day.
I'll be honest with you. I have a lot of great toys in this shop to the degree that it's almost impossible to get bored in here. And yet even I go stir crazy from time to time. And sometimes you just gotta put on one of your favorite spacesuits and make the best of it. I do love spending time in this space building things and I've had a lot of time to do that. And even despite that, these last few weeks have been surpassingly difficult. I had forgotten, and maybe I never even really understood before, just how much energy I get from sharing my world directly with others. I miss my friends, I miss my team. I cannot wait until I can see their faces in person again, share things I love with them and see their eyes light up like mine do. Some people, even as difficult as I find this, actually thrive in this kind of setting. And many great artists find creativity and inspiration in isolation. A new book coming out this fall called Mirror Sound takes a look at the people and processes behind self-recorded music. And two of those artists are with us tonight, Dan Deacon and Vagabond. Hello, I'm Dan Deacon. Regained, so I began my struggles of nothing. This strained out of flash made of time. My new fall blasted out, and it startled me so. And I burst out a shout as if my legs ran frantic like birds from a nest. And I ran up to drain, leaving no choice but rest till I fell asleep softly. The edge of a cave, but I should have gone deeper. But I'm not so brave, and like that, I was torn out. Thrown in the sky, and I said all my prayers because surely I'd die as I crashed down and smashed into earth, into dirt. How my skin did explode, leaving only my shirt. Shirt grew a tree, and that tree grew a fruit. We couldn't see it, and that seed was a fruit. And I crawled through the ground with my roots and my leaves. Tore up the shirt.
Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to introduce Ellen Stofan, the John and Adrian Mars Director of the National Air and Space Museum. Thank you, Adam. On behalf of everyone here at the museum, we are so grateful to you and all of tonight's guests for being here with us. And I'm so glad for everyone tuning in from home. Both of our locations, along with all of the Smithsonian Museums, are temporarily closed to the public and to staff, except for the essential workers who are caring for our facilities and collections. And as important as national treasures like the Space Shuttle Discovery are, our museum is more than a collection of artifacts in glass cases. Museums are living, breathing institutions made up of our staff, our visitors, and the people who make the history that we commemorate. And inspiration is a key medium, every bit as important as education, for passing the torch of discovery and exploration along to new generations. In addition to history's most important air and spacecraft, the National Air and Space Museum also holds the largest collection of aviation and space art in the world. Spaceflight is an extraordinary expression of humanity at its best, and the arts, particularly music, are how we share stories of impossible, aspirational human experiences with each other. There's important science to be done by the first humans on Mars, and the technology to get them done there will be unlike anything the world has ever seen before. But it all has to start with the wild poetic dream of crossing the void to an unknown world. We don't know who the first person on Mars will be, but maybe she's watching along with us tonight. And I hope one of these songs will be the spark that fires her imagination and starts us on the path towards history's next greatest adventure. It's now my pleasure to introduce two people working at that critical intersection of science and storytelling. Bobak Ferdowski, a good friend of mine, is a systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and Leticia Tomko, better known by her stage name Vagabond, is a multi-instrumentalist singer, songwriter, and producer. Welcome, Bobak and Leticia. So sometimes when I'm at work um, doing an analysis, um, trying to you know come up with a solution, I like to put on music to put me in the mood for certain things. I understand how to make a spacecraft, but I never quite connect to how to make music, uh, right? And I think I, I got a solution to one of those, but not the other. And you, um, what do you say, you, you sort of do both. Like you started as an engineer, um, you're a musician, and I'm fascinated by how you take sort of what I see as an approach to engineering and apply it to something so creative? It's really interesting. Engineering is kind of my, is the foundation of what kind of work ethic I have. And that comes from being in engineering school and having such a collaborative um, study group. And that collaboration is mirrored in, in music making. And there is a little bit of a difference um, in that in engineering, it's I have had a very collaborative experience and in music, um, I tend to do everything alone. I'm producing my own records, I'm performing most if not all of the instruments, I'm writing, I'm recording, I'm engineering. Um, so it is isolating compared to engineering, but I think engineering has been the foundation of the work ethic that I have and take over to the creative music art sense. I like the collaborative aspect of my job. Uh, there's a little bit of working, of course, to create a solution, but at the end of the day, I have to somehow convince a lot of other people that my idea, my approach to this, this challenge is the right one. Uh, and that can be really challenging in the sense that, you know, like there's a lot of different ways of, of, of solving technical problems. Uh, so I still think of, of some of my job as storytelling. And I, you know, I, I always think of my music as, as storytelling. Um, you know, for me, I try not to make an emotional appeal, but I guess, what is that like? I mean, what is, how do you go from sort of convincing somebody of something to maybe convincing them of a feeling mm. uh, like that? 
I think it starts with like the conviction. Like if you really believe in what you're saying and you know, in your field, there's an, there's, there's an exact science. In engineering, there's an exact, you know, there's an exact number. Like when we, when we do math, there is, a, there is an answer and everyone has different ways of getting there, but there is a final answer. And I think with music, it's a little bit more um, ambiguous. The way that I feel like I can convey an emotion to other people through a story, through lyrics, through um, just music without words is because I believe if I feel, if I feel something, if I believe in something, if I'm convinced of something, then surely there's someone in the world who feels it too. I can convince myself through a very sort of empirical process, right? Like I, you know, I work on, an, I do an analysis, I do some study, I, and arrive at a conclusion, I convince myself, yeah. how do you do that like with yourself? Like when you say, you know, how do, I, how do you arrive at the conviction for a, a song? Yeah. Um, I think it's, for me, it's because I make it so deeply personal. Um, I don't really write um, fantastical music. Um, but I do have a large imagination. So it's, it's kind of an intersection between having a big imagination and having um, a lot of authenticity, a lot of um, using music as, a, as like a healing property, using it as to, to process something, to work through something. A lot of my music comes from the concept of home. And that's because I moved away from um, where I'm from, Cameroon, at an early age. And, and it's something that is just culminated in everything that I feel. So I think it's about write, writing about what you know about. So I, I'm fascinated because I also, you know, so much of my work also kind of revolves around the concept of home, weirdly enough, right? When it, whether it's uh, looking at you know satellites that observe our Earth and try to understand our own home, or uh, in my you know in my case even contextualizing it right, like looking at the other planets as kind of mirrors on our own world, right? Or Mars being such a similar place at some level to Earth and yet so foreign and so different. Um, I think that's a, an amazing parallel. I'm so like you know also thinking kind of the parallels here, like in science, right? Every question sort of leads to a next question. Do you find that? musically as well that you, you know as you sort of engage in your own kind of emotional uh, experience and musical experience are you also pulling at new threads and finding new things in, in that way definitely um i am obsessed with the challenge and that that is that's why i loved engineering school despite how much it killed me you know and that's why sometimes totally. i like to go back and get my masters or something like i or like you know, um, build something. And that's why, you know, I do math before going to the studio, whatever it is, I, those things, it, it, I really connect to discovering um, new things about myself and doing the things that could get me to a discovery. I can't imagine a sort of better way of sort of tying our two worlds together that we're both on journeys of discovery <laughs> and exploration. I kind of love that. Yeah. Um, you're better known as as Vagabond. Uh, and I know you told me once that you like to do math problems before you you start your, your musical endeavors, but um, we're about to see you perform a song. Can you tell us what song we're about to play? Yeah, um, this song is called In a Bind um, and it's off my latest self-titled record that came out in 2019. Okay, let's take a watch. Mm. Gone online last year, but I 
I have a lot of spacesuits in my collection here in my shop. I can't get enough of all the beautiful, tiny details that speak to human ingenuity at work. When I look at the stitching on a real one, those kind of details, they serve to remind me that no matter how alone we might think we are, even on the surface of the moon, there are smart people with our safety in mind and our well-being at heart, working hard to bring us back home. It's, it's like spacesuits are artful, artificial exoskeletons that humans have built and designed to protect ourselves under the harshest environments, from the depths of the ocean to the vacuum of space. And in a way, it's like seizing control of our own evolution. It's like we've said, after millions of years of natural selection, yeah, we'll take it from here. There's nothing we can't do because there's nothing we can't envision. It's kind of like music that way. Coming up next, it's Valerie June with Astral Plane. Dancing on the astral plane. 
Voyager 1 spacecraft has traveled more than 13 billion miles since it was launched 
1977. It is now the farthest human-made object from Earth, well beyond the bounds of our solar system, and it continues its travels in the space between the stars. But one of the coolest things about Voyager is that in addition to its scientific instrumentation, we also sent out into the universe an expression of all the things that make us human. Onboard Voyager is a golden record album of songs and sounds from Earth. And of course, a stylus to play it with. In many ways, that album inspired tonight's performance. If space exploration represents people doing their very best work, and if that golden record represents everything we wanted the universe to know about us, then we wanted tonight's performance to bring a little bit of that magic back down here to the ground so that we can all remember what makes life on Earth special in the first place. If our little spacecraft ever does connect up with life out there among the stars, we included, along with the record, a letter explaining our gift to the cosmos and our hopes for the future. Here, with our letter to the stars, is Edward James Olmos. This is a present from a small distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts, and our feelings. We're attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. We hope someday, having solved the problems we face, to join a community of galactic civilizations. This record represents our hope, our determination, and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe. Jimmy Carter, President of the United States of America. As the child of an Iranian father and an American mother and growing up overseas, the message of overcoming the isolation of nations to form a global civilization has always been one of incredible hope for me. It's that somehow through space exploration, we'd be able to recognize that we were all travelers on the same planet-sized spaceship worthy of kindness and respect from one another. That idea is hammered home every day as I work on projects that span multiple nations, where teams from various countries come together to accomplish incredible things for all humankind. Timothy Ferris, the producer of The Golden Record, scratched another little greeting by hand into the discs. It's a trick he says he learned from John Lennon. And it says, to the makers of music, all worlds, all times. For this world and this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Clipping. Yeah, 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 yeah. convoluted designed for disaster he's trying to make sense of a universe far too expansive to cope with and he never chose nor was chosen by metrics that make any sense and the senses are numb by emotional stresses there must be a better place to be somebody be somebody else who got time on a string on a finger nothing to remember but the passage of it who got time to let anything linger where it hovers, surely you will learn to love it. Who got time for this love shit anyway? Gotta survive, is it that mess enough for him? There must be a better place to be somebody, be somebody else. Set a course, it's a bet upon an endless roulette wheel. Odds are ungodly, as are the odds of the body. Making it through and surviving the gravity shift. The gravitas of which is lost on the last thoughts of it being ch ch chopped to a bite size and the light eyes begging don't eat the message of the messages in SOS and all the rest is in the language where it goes. There must be a better place to be somebody, be somebody else. And somebody gotta keep watch where the watch stops. He talks about his pops and polarity. Hands fantasize of rocks there will never be. Land hold likely less a hole in the mantle of heaven. He's demanding the evidence of something that maybe never was for anyone. He's missing something pretty. He's missing where the air tastes gritty. He's missing the splendor. 
splendor and misery of bodies of cities of being missed there must be a better place to be somebody be somebody else flesh is bigger than the metal it is true but the metal's being moved into a thing it doesn't do circuitry is only serviceable as much as it is used so why don't you use it till you use it up abuse it it is strong it can take it and you can't your cities are more intuitively designed for dance so let's set a random course safely away from suns 423 by 112 by 51 there must be a better place to be somebody be somebody else are you ready to go uh. are you ready to go say let's go are you ready to go say let's go are you ready to go at home are you ready to go say let's go are you ready to go say let's go are you ready to go are you ready to go yet are you ready to go yet there must be a better place to be somebody be somebody else are you ready to go are you ready to go yet are you ready to go yet are you ready to go are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go yet? There must be a better place to be somebody, be somebody else. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go yet? Are you ready to go yet? There must be a better place to be somebody, be somebody else. Hello, Air and Space Museum. This is Ben Gibbard of the band Death Cab for Cutie, and I've prepared a new song for you about the planet Proxima B, which is entitled Proxima B. <laughs> This world's starting to bring me down The ocean's rising and we're all gonna drown But there's a place where you and I can go where We can start this whole mess all over Proxima B, bathed in the glow of Centauri. Proxima B, careless and free. Don't try to tell me that there's no second act. Say your goodbyes and get your suit. Cause what's the point of trying to save this place? If there's no 
mother out in outer space Approximately from where its sun is in guarantee Approximately the stars are seen Approximately bathed in the glow of sensory. Approximately careless and free. You and I are gonna get it right. We won't make the same mistakes twice Everybody's starting to figure it out Our little planet's slowly drawing a crowd On Proxima B I remember when it was just you and me Approximately careless and free Approximately bathed in the glow of sensory Approximately the stars are seen Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much for coming along with us for Space Songs Through the Distance from the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. We are especially grateful to all of our special guests who took the time to be with us here in spirit, if not in person. And before we wrap it up and say goodnight, we have one more special song here to help us close out Space Songs is Sting with Walking on the Moon. <laughs> Walking on the moon 
My feet don't hardly touch the ground Walking on the moon My feet don't hardly make the sound Walking on, walking on the moon Some may say I'm wishing my days away No way And if it's the price I pay Some say Tomorrow's another day You stay May as well play Giant steps are what you take I hope my leg don't break We could walk forever We could be together And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. Ten, nine, Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Dane, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tank. Okay, hey, here uh, we've had a problem here. And the final liftoff of Discovery, a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Boom di ara 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 boom di ara